So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry, this is like the third take that I've taken because my dog's just got this energy boost and she's running around the house, so <laughs> I had to stop it each time. But I wanna talk about, in this video, increasing your muscle protein synthesis while decreasing muscle protein breakdown. So this is a, a video for those of you guys that actually are looking at building lean muscle, maintaining muscles. So this is actually a great research study for those and I haven't used it this way yet. I've been using, I've been running maintenance and I've been having great success with this, but I, I'm waiting to when I decide to diet down, I'm over in the holidays and stuff like that. because I wanna actually utilize it then as well because the idea of increasing your muscle protein synthesis per meal by six, three to six fold and decreasing your muscle protein breakdown, which I'll put some graphs up here in a little bit and show you the studies and the graphs that uh, go along with them is just a cool idea. Now I've been doing this for about a month. I'm, what I've noticed is if I noticed better recovery, I have noticed I basically was eating about 40 grams per meal of protein. So 35, 40 grams, you know, except my pre-workout meal and my post-workout meal. The other three meals were around 40 grams. I eat five meals a day. Pre-workout, I, I do 20 grams of protein, which I utilize this method with that meal. And after the workout, I do 50, 50 grams of whey protein. So I've been doing that for a long time. And you know, that's a good way. That, that increases muscle protein synthesis quite a bit. I and mean, I've made some good gains over the years doing that. Um, but this has made a big difference uh, in my workouts and everything. So I wanted to share this with you guys. And this research study is awesome because I've been messing around with EAAs for quite a long time. I knew BCAs are not the way to go because BCAs, which I'll do another video on them, but BCAs actually can make you more catabolic when you take them. I've been trying to tell people ditch your BCAs, they don't do anything. And I do have a few studies here that I'll do on my next video that will probably surprise you if you're a BCA users. So I would switch to EAAs regardless, even if you're taking them during the workout. There's something to do with a rate limiting effect of the missing proteins, uh, especially the essential amino acids when you try to take BCAs and your body's trying to compensate for the other aminos to actually build muscle. And what happens with BCAs is most of the non-essential amino acids or some of the essential amino acids that you're not getting BCAs, your body will actually break down more muscle to try to compensate for the increase in the three branching amino acids. Now, branching amino acids, if you don't know, are in EAAs. They are essential amino acids also. There's just a few other ones. Um, off the top of my head, I can't name them all, but to have that complete essential amino acid formulation is very, very important if you're trying to maintain, build muscle and recover. Now this study looked at taking a regular whey supplement. I think they used Gatorade Recovery, which has about 40 grams of protein in it. And they compared it to whey protein with a low dose of EAAs that was, I think it was 3.9 grams of each EAAs. And then they also did another dose of whey protein with about 12, 11 point something plus or minus EAAs for the high dose of EAAs. So they had a low dose of EAAs with whey protein, a high dose of EAAs with whey protein, and they had whey protein alone. And I'm gonna throw some graphs up here, but first I wanna go ahead and read one of the, the first paragraph in the discussion and then the first paragraph in the conclusion. So I'll pop it up on the screen here and I'll read it for you. So in the first paragraph of the discussion, it says the principal findings of this study is that a combination of free EAs and whey protein is highly anabolic in healthy young volunteers. The anabolic response to the free EAA protein composition was dose dependent. Interesting. The gain in nitrogen balance following consumption of 12.6 grams of free EAAs plus whey protein was significantly greater than response of nitrogen balance to consumption of 6.3 grams of free EAAs with protein with a protein product when normalized for the amount of product consumed due to a greater suppression of protein breakdown. 
So right there, which one of the graphs I'll show you, it shows that the higher the dose of EAAs along with whey protein decreased muscle breakdown. It says the anabolic responses of either dose of free EAAs to whey protein product was greater than the response to the whey protein based commercial beverage when normalized the amount consumed. When normalized for the amount of product consumed, the low dose free EAA protein response of nitrogen balance was approximately threefold greater than the whey protein product alone. And the response of the nitrogen balance to the high dose of the free EAA product was approximately six times greater than the response of whey protein by, it, uh, by itself. So the low dose of EAAs was already greater by threefold and then a higher dose of EAAs was even greater than that. Now here we have the conclusions to the article and I will put a link down to the article in case you wanna browse through the whole thing. It's very, very interesting. The conclusions, we conclude that there is an interactive effect between free EAAs and whey protein that makes their combination highly anabolic in a dose dependent manner that exceeds the anabolic response to whey protein based supplement Gatorade recovery by approximately three and six fold for the low and high dosages of free EAA to protein, respectively, when, e when evaluated on a gram for gram basis. So I first want to tell you guys that there is a big difference with branched amino acids and L-leucine. So way back in the day, we all thought, or you know, the industry thought that L-leucine would spike muscle protein synthesis in people, but it did, but it was so, so short term, it was, not even worth it. So it would spike it, but without all the other amino acids, it wouldn't last. Now the response, if you read the article in that I'm gonna post down below, the muscle protein synthesis response of the greater values and also the decrease in muscle protein breakdown lasted for approximately four hours when, when combined with whey protein, which is pretty good. Because usually whey protein alone, if you read the studies, it's three to four hours before it does give it's a spike in muscle protein synthesis. So it actually outlasted whey protein by itself with a greater response and a greater decrease in muscle protein breakdown. Now, this does not go either with, it doesn't go with leucine, a leucine product. Uh, for years, you, you know, people you got people trying to sell HMB and leucine and saying, taking it with a meal, it'll increase your ana, you know, anabolic response. It doesn't do it. It is not, not, not sufficient enough, it's a waste of money. And also branched amino acids are actually worse because they cause more of a muscle breakdown because of the lack of the other essential amino acids. So if you read the article, the non-essential amino acids our body produces. So there's quite a few amino acids and there are some that are called non-essential. And these are amino acids that actually our body can produce by themselves. The essential amino acids we need to get from our diet. And if you take the essential amino acids, uh, let's say the three of them, which is the branched chain amino acids, and it's lacking the other essential amino acids, then the only way the body can get it because it can't produce it is by breaking down more muscle tissue in order to, com you know, to complete the actual muscle protein building response with the utilization of complete proteins. So I'm gonna throw a graph up here and we'll take a look at that. So in this graph, it shows changes from baseline of whole body net protein balance, uh, protein synthesis and protein breakdown. Following consumption of one to two dosages of free EAAs, consumption, same dosage, 6.3 grams, 12 but on the low, 12.6 grams on high, and whey protein product at 17.9 grams. Now on the top part of the line here, you can see the actual nitrogen balance, protein synthesis from left to right, and protein breakdown. So those are the different columns there, left to right, nitrogen balance, protein synthesis, protein breakdown. So nitrogen balance is quite high when you add the high EAs to whey. When you have the low EAs to whey, it's higher than whey protein alone. And then as protein synthesis is, is monitored there, protein synthesis is way higher by sixfold is what they're saying, and then the EAAs, the low dose of EAAs, 
and the whey protein alone. So you see that whey protein alone, it still spikes muscle protein synthesis, but you're getting way more bang into the muscle protein synthesis by adding EAAs to the whey protein. Now, muscle protein breakdown is actually super interesting. So this intrigued me because that it, our bodies are always going through a breakdown and repair process. And 40% of the time during the day or greater, we're in a breakdown state. So eating every four hours or five hours, spiking muscle protein synthesis that high as far as sixfold or even threefold, along with slowing down muscle protein breakdown by that much using the high EAA dose. Didn't do much on the low EAA dose. Actually, the whey protein alone did better than the low EAA dose, but on the high EAA dose, around 12 grams, which in the article, you they'll, they're going to pretty much still say something about 11.9 plus or minus is what they're figuring. So, but they use 12 for this. That's quite a big decrease in muscle protein breakdown. I love it. I'm, I love sharing this with you guys. Now on to the next one. So on this graph here, basically it's total plasma essential amino acid concentration. This is the upper panel and leucine concentration on the lower panel before following consumption of one or two doses. So you got the same dosages. Don't want to make this boring for you. 6.3 on the low, 12.6 on the high, 17.9 grams of whey protein. Bar graphs on right, right represent the area under the curve for the response above baseline over the four hour following consumption of each dose of free EAA protein and of whey protein. So you see the, the, you look at the graph here, you got on the top and the bottom, you have four hours pretty much where they're showing on both. And this make this plain and simple. They're both pretty much the same. It's not, it's not like you, we have to distinguish between one or two um, graphs here, but they're just giving you the EA concentrations on the top and leucine concentrations on the bottom, and they're both pretty pretty equal, which is main, which is mainly saying that the body is actually in a complete muscle protein synthesis response, anabolic response for that long amount of time with those two with that amino acid, which is leucine, the main driver of leucine, and the EAA concentration. And if you look, of course, you got the high EA boom on muscle protein synthesis, the low EA boom higher than whey protein. And that's for a four hour period of time. You can see the graphs and the lines, how it elevates to a certain peak for a few hours and then it starts to drop off, drop off, but it still stays more elevated than the whey protein, even with the low dose EAAs. So, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this information. It's pure gold to me, especially for my goals, and I hope for yours too, it works out the same. If you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to get lean and spare muscle, this is definitely something you've got to try. And I want to say this before I get into what I use and, and other products that you can use, is this does not apply with BCAs. It does not apply with L-leucine. It does not apply with HMB. And I've heard other people talk about this study without actually reading the study, assuming that it applies to branched chain amino acids. And I'm not going to name names. And just want to leave the video with the one that I use, some that you can use too. Grunt by Recon One and EAA Max by primal nutrition which you can get on amazon both those you can get on amazon they're good products i don't like the taste of grunt and the primal is just a little more expensive than the eaa pure by nutribile that i use and this one it has uh hydration factors to it, it has a little l-taurine in it which is good for your heart a um, little bit of energy it's good for cramping and stuff like that and it has L alanine in it which is great for absorption of amino acids so by far in my opinion this is a better product formulation than the other ones you can get this one here i know you can get the other ones off of amazon this one here 
You can't get it on Amazon. I don't know why they don't sell it there, but you can get it at getyoked.com. That's getyoked.com. I don't get anything from them. I don't get anything from this product. Don't get anything from mentioning those products. If I can find a link to this, I'll go and put it down below for you. If they don't have it in stock, then I, you can find it online. It's everywhere. And I believe it's about $23. So this is Dave signing off until the next time.